Then, guys, I'm in my natural environment, the wild. <laughs> right, I'm fishing for wild tench today. I've been trying to do this video for ages. I blanked. I'm probably going to post this up today because I'm going to post up a blank, but I might not. So you have to watch to find out. But basically, there's going to be lots of tips and stuff about fishing wild waters. Uh, if you look on my Instagram, I've got loads of wild fish. Um, what's it called? I've got three rods. I've been really greedy. And you understand why when I explain in a minute. Right, first rod. There we go. Alright. Try not to get my feet wet. But what I've done is. This problem is so, so swampy. That's why I didn't come here the other day. Right, pop up. This is going to pop up just like that. Small little look, as you can see. Tiny little bait. Little 10 mil pop up. But yeah, I've got my 10 mils in, in here, in the bag, and this is just purely just to give it a little bit of attraction. And I'll tell you what I've done in a minute, and some of the little tips I'll, I'll give you for tench fishing. It's raining. I've got PVA bags sort of dissolving in my hand. But this is the bag. Got to sort out because it's gone all soft and weird. I think there's so much moisture in the air. Alright, and get this straight out. And I'll put that just over to the left. And then I'll come back to you. Alright, and then obviously go get the flight out. Here we are. Float. Got hair rigged, fake bit of corn and real corn, and it's just popped up off the bottom of a lead shot. And I'll explain all this, why I'm doing it like this in a minute. It all makes sense. All right, here we go, guys. At the wild lake. Three rods out and honestly I love birds but here they can literally stop you catching uh, the water is gene clear two foot deep and they will dive right in front of you so you have to be right on it with your net and everything honestly um, I definitely put them down to sometimes I'm blanking down here because they will literally and they'll clear out your swim as well so like as soon as I leave they'll just come in and they just clear out anything that I put out so I've learned for a little tip for you to put it out at night don't put it out in a day because uh, they'll see it and they will, they will eat it. Uh, you're right, Pain. I'll take my hat off in a minute. Right. Uh, I'll take this off as well, I'm getting quite warm. Yeah. Basically, I'm going to explain what I'm doing. Those two rods are on pop ups, right? And this one's on a pop up as well for a main reason. And I fished here a lot for, a, I don't know, probably two. Yeah, I fished here a lot for about two years. Um, only in the summer, obviously. I did get a bit of pike fishing in there, but it's quite hard. Had a few, but it's just even fresher. Um, anyway, basically, there's silkweed all through this lake, and in the summer, it's horrendous. Like, it's as deep as me, and that's not an exaggeration. It's thick as me. You can't even present a bait in it. Um, but what I have been doing, I've learned down here, is if you pre-bait, leave it a day, then fish it, it seems to do better. I don't know why I've someone free baited, I come in and I do normally blank. Um, but whenever I come past this place, I just try and chuck some bait in. It's basically, even if I'm not fishing it, like yesterday I was coming home um, from the other lake that I fished, the video that I posted up, um, I just literally come here, I had half ten corn left there and just chucked it all in. Um, you've got to like, put a lot of time in for these kind of places. Like, literally, you sit down here and I go around the corner, like I said, I can catch ten carp if I want. But, this is proper fishing, hard fishing. Um, I've caught two commons out of here and loads and loads of tench. Um, I've had three carp, but I think one of them is the same one. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, I am trying for the carp as well today. 
and that's why I've got three rods out. Normally I have two out, one on the ledger and one on the flit, and that's because purely it just get ups my chances of hooking into a fish. Because like I said, there's so much silkweed, you, honestly, the amount of times I've reeled in, and I've just got loads of weed on my, on my thing, even with PVA bags and blah, 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 it can be a nightmare, and that's why I use helicopter rig. But anyway, um, that's the reason why I'm fishing like the way I am today, and I put a bait in those spots quite a bit. So the fish are used to seeing bait in these areas. So, but they're not, they're so funny, trust me, they're so funny. I've blanked this so many times. And um, I know my bait's presented and that, that's the most important thing to me I've learned. Um, screw bait, screw everything you know about fishing. Presentation. Um, I know that's a given in most places, but this is really important in here. Uh, it's jean clear, they're like, it's not my float, they just spook off the float, so I never catch carp in here. As soon as you see that float, they're out of here. They're not fish for fish. So, you speak up for it easily, but there's some bubbling going on. And I'll do a little zoom in on my float in a bit. Um, but I'm not fishing, I'm literally fishing a rod length out, just in front of my rod tip. And there's two rods, one's fishing there to the bush and one's fishing there. But it's going to be a whole tight Mary because every fish I've caught in here, they've gone mental. And to me, this is early, really early on in the season. Generally, I don't start fishing this until uh, late May and uh, June. And uh, if anyone fishes wild lakes, you know what I'm all about. They just switch off over winter, they're not on. Um, it's so hard, it's not like you can catch tension in December in here, you know. They're really, really funny. Um, but as the temperature starts to raise today, I think it's going to be about 8, 9 degrees. So I put some bait out last night, we had heavy rain. So, fingers crossed, I could have a chance today. Right, I'm going to leave it there, it's just a little intro into the lake. But yeah, it's an old, basically, it used to be a fishery. And uh, it got like left because it can control it, I presume. Um, and uh, a lot of people started dumping trolleys and goodness what else in here. Um, and there is a couple of other swims you can fish, not just this swim. Um, but again, like I said, it's really hard. You can, I could go around the corner if I wanted to and probably catch a tench. But it's not the same, is it? It's not the same. And the first tench, proper tench I ever caught was out of here. Even though I caught a tench out of Summer Lane, uh, all the little lakes I fish, um, this, this place is just, I don't know what it is about it. It's just like crab tree kind of stuff, you know? Weedy, clear, um, water. And the other great thing about this is what I learned is that fish go through channels with, with weedy lakes like this and watch them in the summer and the spring and watch their roots. So then when in the wind, where in the early spring comes and you come back to fish here, you remember where the channels are. So you know where you caught fish, you know where fish travel through. Like I know fish actually come past this margin here. I've seen it loads of times. So it's just keeping a mental idea, a mental like map of the, the land, the layer of the, the lake when you're actually fishing. It's the most important thing. Um, yeah, I'll be happy even with a big rod today. I've caught a couple of big rods out here. Um, but like I said, this is, is just like an intro into wild fishing. Um, presentation is key, and that's why I bring so many rods with me. Generally, I, would, I, I used to just fish with one float rod, but the amount of times it's just in weed. It's just like, am I fishing? I can reel that in now. More likely, it's probably in weed. You know, it's how bad it is. Even when you've raked it and that, it comes through so quick. Um, and if you get a worm on, <laughs> he's digging himself right in that silt. It stinks down there. It's really deep. So. Um, yeah, presentation is key. Keep it popped off that silt, off the weed, uh, in their faces. And wild fish, I've, I told you, I've, you know, I've caught loads of them before. Loads of them. I've caught a few. I've caught more than most people have. And um, every time, always on corn, popped up corn or something like that. It's just generally presentation is key. Right, I'll get back to it in a bit, boys. Right, ciao for now. Here you go, guys. It's going to be another little tip. This one, you hide me behind the camera talking. Um, you don't want to be standing over there. It's too clear. It will definitely see me. And um, sorry, my float dip then a little bit. Um, if you're fishing for big fish, right, tench or carp, like wild or like, just big fish, right? Generally, try not to get the, too, the small fish going too much in a wild lake. Um, I found that one is it brings in the eels, <laughs> not eels, uh, brings in the pike. Sorry brings in the pipe and you get a lot of small fish messing around with your float if you float fishing and uh, so that's why I stopped feeding bread and everything I learned that last year I was putting a lot of bread and stuff in getting the rug going and uh, yeah basically that uh, the rug would get going and the pike would come in and that just scares the, the hell out of the, part of the tench um, some of the tench I've caught in here and they've got massive scars on them um, when they've been caught grabbed by pike Ooh. 
and um, yeah, and, uh, I've seen the tension. Yeah, they can be really funny sometimes. Like I seen it, um, I climbed up the tree, the proper crab tree stuff, and looked down when I was feeding, and I watched three tents come in, and two males and a female. You can always tell because females are really big, and she was cruising around, and the little males just grabbed my bait, just grabbed it. It was about a four pound female. I couldn't believe it. But um, they're so spooky in it, honestly. Um, you can't cast around and stuff. Um, like just stand there casting the float when you're fishing there. Um, and I've had a little weird dip in my float, and I've loads of times I've reeled in and I've just got weed on it. It's where the little fish drag it into the weed all the time and they're messing around with the corn or the worm or the maggot. So when I'm fishing it generally, and I'm fishing for big tench, and sometimes I will come down here with maggots and I'll just have a blast and sometimes I do catch tench, obviously. But I found the have all been when I've just put corn or pellet out um, purely because, of, like I said, I don't want small fish going. And when you do get them going in the amount, they go mental, honestly. Um, obviously, I couldn't post up the last couple of videos because I blanked it, but I will be posting this stuff anyway because it's got a lot of tips on that for wild fishing. And like I said, if you, you know anyone with fishes for wild fish, it's a lot of blanks. Okay, you put a lot of time and effort in and you do get a lot of blanks, but when you get the reward, it's amazing. Um, fished here for eight, nine hours for one tench, you know, loads of times. That's the kind of fishing it is when you're fishing for wild fish. Some days I might be lucky and catch uh, my best days three tench and one eel. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, you can't, it's not like a commercial, you can't just keep casting and casting and casting. Just, just little tips for you there. And uh, um, when you see the fish mon uh, like in the summer, I can not generally normally see the carp cruising around. So if I really wanted to target them, I can use a zig or something. But I did lose one last year. It wasn't massive, it was about ten pound. It's black common. And I've had a black common out of there about nine between nine and eleven pound. It was a nice fish, really cracking, two grains of corn. Um, straight hook, not hair rigged. Um, if the, if there's another swim where it's a little bit clearer sometimes in places that I know. So um, I fish there with just grains of corn on straight on the hook. Probably do a video on there as well. Um, but yeah, here where I'm fishing, even when I clear it with my landing net and get rake out with the rope, got rake and rope in that. Um, yeah, it doesn't guarantee anything, trust me. You've got to make sure PV bags and everything. But yeah, I've, most times I've gone to re reel my float in and just big bow waves just flew out my swim. It's so funny, honestly. That's why, um, you know, when you're fishing, you can't just keep casting. You have to make sure it's fishing. Um, I'm not all about, um, like I said, I keep saying, I'm not all about commercials. You can cast a million times to keep coming in. But one old tench, you do not want to keep casting. Trust me. You want your bait presented, let down, waiting for them to come in. And then the last little tip for you, right? I had a carp once come in my swim. It was only about four or five pounds. And it swam through my swim, looked at all my bait, I had 10 mil boilies out. And it just swam all past them and just swam off. And I thought, what the hell is that about? Come back in again, picked up a couple of grains of corn, spat them out and just swam off. And I was like, that's a wild fish, why did After the nutritional value, wow. He wasn't that hungry, was he? He just was spooky about something, I don't know what it was. So what I did is, I thought, bearing in mind, you can see through water. So I was fishing really close. So I was like, shit, what can I do, what can I do? So I thought, I put a pop-up on and see without change anything. I put a pop-up on, but 20 minutes later, the carp came back through the little tunnel of weed, through my swim, seen the pop-up, bang, grabbed it straight away. Boosh, that's why pop-ups can be really good. Because obviously that carp wasn't getting his head down, was he? He was just cruising around, grabbing little bits. Um, I find when I pre-bait, I do not put hardly any bait out. I literally put a handful of corn there, handful of corn, that's it. No more bait now, because I put bait out last time. And I'm hoping that they're going to come back, or they do if you've ever pre-baited other lakes, come back and they come trying to pick up any other things what left over. So, you know, some little tips and tricks for you there. But I'm going to give the float rod a little recast now. But yeah, try not to get all little small fish going, all the rod going, if you're after specimen fish, you know, or wild tench generally. I could sit here with the float just pulling them in and out. I ain't going to catch a tench in front of myself in clear water if I'm catching loads of rod. I've learned that the hard way, okay? And um, even on hair of corn before, I've caught uh, bloody rud. So don't think, oh, 
You just put on two greens of haunt corn on a hook, you put them off because you won't. And you might do it first. That's what I do. So I find a first as the day goes on. I'll get away with that. But as the session gets on and on and on, um, the more and more fish in my swim, more and more apparent that uh, it's big. So I'm afraid it's a mess. But yeah, basically, you just keep tying the bait in it. it you just get all the small fish going, and you just catch those little rod. And, and honestly, the amount of bow wave, well, not the amount of bow wave, that's happened a couple of times, where you catch a rod and it just boom, bow way out. Then you're not going to catch a specimen tench or wild fish when you're catching loads of little small fish. Okay, I had this discussion on a tench um, on Facebook, a tench group, about it. And um, I was saying, like, literally, I can get them going that bad in here that they drag my float around. The rod will attack the float so much, it's just bobbing up and down, up and down. So, but like I said today, I, I would be happy with one fish. To come here and catch one fish in about five, six hours is kind of average. Got to put the time in. Um, but like I said, presentation's key here. All right, ciao for now, guys. A little random one for you as well. If you're catching tank eels in your swim, you can still catch carp, by the way, uh, tank, by the way. But you will find they will kill the swim for a long time. So just bear that in mind. It's a little robin eating my corn. But yeah, it's better out of mine. And, um, last, oh, what was it? Um, yeah, that's what makes you laugh as well. People calling me a rookie. It's so funny. It's like, well, I'm a rookie at carp fishing. Like, Do you know, a rookie don't catch fish, mate. <laughs> I catch fish all the time. I catch fish every week. That's why I always get comments about it, you know? It's so weird. It's like, oh, you're a rookie because of my, my gear. Because uh, I've got cheap gear, I'm a rookie. It really makes sense, mate. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not going to be start running on by the fish that I've caught, but I've caught a lot of wild tench, I've caught some big perch, I've caught big roach, a lot of big fish for little waters that I fish, you know, and um, I don't live nowhere near linear, and I'm not driving to linear to fish because it's not my type of fishing, I've been loads of times, that twice, sorry, caught a pike, <laughs> but yeah, not my type of fishing. Oh, because I can't do it, because they like it. <laughs> it's a big difference. This is my type of fishing. And I get it now why um, I used to watch the crab tree and that, and uh, the old school, you know, videos. And you're like, Mr. Robin, please. <laughs> um, I don't know why he's like Robin, he always follows me around. I do beat him. Um, yeah, when Crabtree and all those other got old school videos you watch, and they talk about how you know hard it is to catch a carp. I understand now from being on this water. When I first started fishing, obviously, everybody catches loads of fish here and there, but I'm glad. But, um, some bubbling. But, you've literally got a few carp in a lake, right? And it's gene clear and weedy. They're hard to catch, trust me. That's why linear and places like that are so, like, whoa, you know? Um, they're on a snake gravel pit. It's an old little pond, they're literally. But it's weedy and it's gene clear. And it's got a couple of carp in it and those tench, but that's so funny, honestly. Um, I've never blanked so much, but down here. And um, I know it's not my presentation because I do the same presentation as over there and I catch. It's just where the fish are, what, what they're doing, what moods they're in, low pressure, high pressure, blah, blah, blah. Um, but like I said, I've only ever lost one carp in here and I've uh, landed two and I've landed. Oh, probably 30, 40 tench. Each season, I'll probably have about 10, 11 tench out of there. It's not easy, like I said, um, but it's a proper wild fishing. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy the video, even if I don't catch anything. It's just like tips and stuff, you know, about wild fishing and stuff. You really do have to be patient. You've got to put your time in. It's not a commercial. Um, so if any of you are, you know, thinking about Finding some little wild spots. There's plenty around, mate, trust me. Unless you live in, like, London. <laughs> um, but still, I bet you there's loads of little places. Um, but, yeah, it's like this place is just neglected. There's carp, um, there's carp puddles everywhere around here where I live. I literally, I could name four lakes, you know, well, more than that. There's lakes everywhere all around me, so that's the thing, this type of thing. That's why I don't really worry about people stealing my fishing spots because people are lazy. People like to go to a commercial and stick out their pole or whatever they do, you know? And not this and that, by the way, if you want to do that, carry on. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard. And um, I've known people to come and fish here and same with me, we blank. 
You have to really put the time in to get results out of this place. And most people won't put the time in. And to them, it's not worth it. Um, but like when I caught that 12-pound common after two years of fishing it, I was buzzing. And out of a different lake, I caught a 18-pound mirror. When I caught that, that was, I was buzzing. It was like, Whoa! It was absolutely massive. Wild fish, six-pound line, little size 12 hook, can beat it. Um, and if you want to see that fish, have a look on Instagram. I've got it on there. I've literally put wild fish, wild carp, caught a um, big mirror. It's cracker, it was. Stunning fish. Um, probably one of my favourite days of fishing, that was. Right, anyway, I'm going to have to shoot on. Because um, otherwise, it's going to be another video of me just talking crap. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's one thing I forgot to say about as well. You notice know, I keep hiding. It's because, like you keep saying, I can't stand directly in front until I catch fish because it just scares them. Trust me. I know a lot about uh, wild fish. It's one thing that I am pretty uh, clued up on, I do think. I fish wild venues more than I have uh, commercials. Um, and if you can catch fish on here, you'll smash it on commercials, trust me. Um, the only thing I do do differently, what I will say is that um, generally and normally I up my hook size. Um, I will be, uh, on the next video, I'll probably up my hook size. Just being a little bit lazier today. But normally I use on here a size 10. Um, I've even gone, when I was carp fishing on here for the carp, I did even use a size 6. Um, so yeah, I will use big hooks if I have to, if I'm putting off other fish. I used a bright pop-up, I think it was like a 15 mil pop-up, and it's a size 6 hook. And I got a run off it, <laughs> playing it, and the hook pulled, I was crying. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, that was the thing I was going to go on about. Bloody unhooking mat. Yeah, my unhooking mat's a state now. Um, but I've always got an unhooking mat. Someone commented, yeah, rookie, you ain't got an unhooking mat. It's like, dude, just watch my videos, I've got an unhooking mat every time. Just think that I ain't gonna catch fish and leave my unhooking mat there and then just show you the fish in the empty. Obviously, I've got an unhooking mat. Um, and when I go big carp fishing, um, what well, I haven't done a video on yet, um, I use a cradle, you know? I've got a big cradle, big, uh, I won't even see the brand, but I've got a big cradle. So, uh, yeah, just because you see me with like, some of this stuff, people think this is like all my gear and this is a, completely how I fish, you know? This is just generally how I fish. Um, like I said, uh, commercials are not really my thing. Um, I like fishing them, especially when I've got a lot of blanks. <laughs> if I'm blanking here a lot, commercials have definitely got their place. Um, and they're good to learn fishing and stuff, but this is so much better to me. Even though I have one run yet, <laughs> this is uh, what I do. It could be in two to three days, could be a week. <laughs> the thing with this type of water. Um, but at the end, I'll show you my, um, what's it called, the fish that I caught out of it, just so you know, people realise that I've caught fish. Um, so I've got a float going there. But yeah, so I'll post up at the end all the tension that I caught and stuff like that out of here. Just give you an idea of things that are cool. Uh, and I do know what I'm talking about, but with this type of water, like I said, it's not. Um, in, if this was June, July, I definitely would have caught them. I caught all well, I caught one. I've only have one, because like I said, they're really funny. That was a fish, wow. But yeah, like I said, you don't want to be piling those little bits to get the eels going while the eel's not even on yet. See what I mean? Like, that's only um, how I used to, like, this year's been a little bit warmer than last year. But generally, when the eels are on, the tents are on, that's what I found on wild waters. Um, so, uh, if you catch an eel, probably the tent should be on. <laughs> right, anyway, last little bit of tip. There's a little tip for you. Um, good thing about these antenna floats, when you post, post them out, cast them out, as you can see, they have different colours on it. I don't know if what the uses are for them, but the uses that I use for them is that I can see where, when it pops up, where it's to. Basically, that when you can't see it sometimes, the yellow pops up and you can see it where the float is. If you cast them quite far, they're really good because they pop right up so you see where it's to. I like that. That's why I presume they call an antenna float. I don't even know, I don't even check that out. Um, but anyway, what I'm going on about is that like, then I cast it out a little bit right where I know there's a weed bed because I used to fish here, I told you loads of times, so I know where the weed beds are. And I cast it out and the float didn't set right. It didn't go under and up, it just stayed up. But hey, it's on the weed bed. And I was right. 
And it wasn't loads, but it was enough to not get a bite. So, I passed out this time. It's exactly where I know there's no wee bed. Fleet fishing, you see, as you see, it's coming right down now. Oh, yeah, I've got to say as well, I've got a, I've got a really cool troll at the moment. <laughs> He's such a muppet, he really is. He's calling me a rookie and everything else. Watches every video, he comments on every video. He's definitely a new fan, uh, but I just want to talk about the trolls for a minute. They're so weird, aren't they? They're such weird little people. They hide behind this, uh, especially on YouTube, because on Facebook you can't do it, because I would just find you and I would beat you up. <laughs> um, but on YouTube you can hide with these little weird things. And one guy commented, right, he said, uh, you could knock me out or you're, you're dreaming. I can't remember, what, it was something about me not being able to knock him out. So I went onto his channel and he had like some rubbish review and I was like, and he was an absolute goon. He'd never, you could tell he'd never been fighting his life. I wouldn't care if he'd been in a pub fight. I'm a professional fighter. It, of people nuts, I'm a martial arts teacher and fighter, right? I fought for a British title, I won the area title. I got offered a title fight the other day. Um, I think they offered me it because I can't fight, I'm a pussy. You know, people were absolutely insane. And then one guy put, I'm gonna terrorize you. What, on YouTube, with your words, you muppet? It's like, are you, yeah, you're scaring me. Yeah, one guy keeps threatening me, going on about Maddie McCann and God knows what else. Like, honestly, and he's calling me a crackhead. And I'm like, dude, you're the one we're talking about Maddie McCann, you fucking weirdo. Oh, it is funny, it does make me giggle. I go on there and I literally have to reply because they're so funny. And I just call them weak and everything else. Um, because the funniest thing is I've always got the last laugh on them because I'm the one that's willing to go and meet him if you ever wanted to, you know? It's so weird and I can fight. Like I said, I'm a martial arts trainer. It's my full-time job, you know? And then you've got, yeah, some average, like, if you're a professional fighter, yeah, you're above average for fighting. If that makes sense? Like, if you, we all went in a gym, right? And I lined up all the average people who say, like, I don't know, those people have never been in a fight before and then put a fighter amongst all them. Who do you think is gonna win out of a fight? The guy who's a professional fighter and trains every day, or the average dude who drinks a pint down the pub and thinks he's hard. The guy who professionally fights, you know? Oh. And uh, yeah, and I've got some guy, I'm gonna terrorize you on fight, I'm gonna terrorize you on YouTube. Every video you post, I'm gonna comment and I'm gonna terrorize you with my words. It's like, dude, there's nothing you can say to me what's gonna hurt my feelings, you know? The only people who can hurt my feelings are people that I actually know and if they said something to me, you know, because that's genuine. But um, some guy on YouTube calling me an, a rookie or a noddy or a crackhead or whatever else they want to call me, doesn't bother me, dude. It really doesn't. As you can see, I love my fishing and I'm just sharing what I'm doing. And if you want to hate on that, then up yours. I don't really care, you know. I'm not trying to get sponsored. I ain't no fair brass and I don't pretend to be. I've got cheap gear, cheap rods, I catch a lot of fish, and I catch a lot of different fish, from carp to bream to perch to blah, blah, blah. And if they actually, but I all noticed it, there you go, just before, before we finish tandem, we all noticed it when it started from the carp fishing. Carp fishing has got a lot of weirdos. <laughs> I'm sorry, carp anglers. Um, I didn't consider myself a carp angler, even though I catch carp. Um, a wild carp angler, I'd say sometimes, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, they're all about their rods, and they the real sit, and, where this does this. There's a bit of light in the thing. Jesus Christ, I'm gonna get strong. Um, yeah, it's like, it's all about the gear. It really is about the gear with carp anglers. Um, roach angling, you didn't get that kind of stuff. People don't go, oh, you ain't got a cutie reel. You ain't got a cutie rod. Oh, you're not doing this, you know? Um, carp anglers, they are strange. Like the bobbins have got to be the same. The handles have got to face the same way. You know, it is quite funny. Um, but yeah, there's me dissing to carp anglers. I do like carp anglers, some of them. But yeah, I noticed definitely the weirdness came from that boily scam video. <laughs> and uh, it's actually, that's what hit off my YouTube. It was the funniest thing. But to be known as the boily scam guy, it's, <laughs> it's so weird. I gotta admit, it is quite funny. That's how I'm known. Like all the fish, are, well, all the fish are, I've caught, but all the stuff videos I've done, swam in a lake after a goldfish, caught pike off a bloody, off out of a ditch. You know, loads of other stuff. And I'm known as the boily scam guy. <laughs> 
I was on Total Carp the other day chatting away, and people were like, you're that guy. <laughs> oh, that was I posted the photos of my fish, and uh, someone put an angry face. <laughs> it's probably him, wasn't it? It's probably that guy off the YouTube. Um, but yeah, it was so, so funny. People were like, you're about the body scam guy. It's like, oh, great. Yeah, this is how I'm known now. This is when my YouTube channel started, when I fit I don't even fish for carp, really, you know what I mean? It's, it's funny. Well, I do, you know I do, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not the carp angler, I ain't, I ain't getting in the air, am I? I'm not going to Oxley's, I'm not going to these other places. And I've been there, that's the funniest thing people won't even realise. Like, I've been to Linear, um, uh, a couple of residents that I used to fish, uh, I won't mention them. But yeah, you know, so I have been to these waters, you don't realise, I have been to these waters and stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, there you go, last little tantrum, uh, Linear. Go to Linear. You learn a lot about carp fishing. Don't do it. <laughs> it's terrible, honestly. Go linear if you're a good angler, right? And you know what you're doing, okay? And you're good at spotting and all that kind of stuff, right? But if you're, you know, a beginner to carp fishing, I like, even, I just spoke to someone, right? I, he was a friend, but I wouldn't go on about it too much. Um, but he was telling me how, you know, basically, he, he sold me linear, sold me linear. I seen it, uh, he was telling me about, Oh, this place is this and that and everything. Right? Looking at all these videos, oh, this is, this is really cool. And I got there and it was crazy. There was cars driving on everywhere, people bivvied up behind each other. It was so weird, man. Um, but thing wrong, obviously, it's got some cracking fish in it and some absolute stunners. I'm not just in it that. Um, they're wise fish, proper wise fish, you know, uh, especially the ones in St. John's and that. They're really wise fish. But yeah, it is funny, you know, the way people are like, oh my God. You're such a rookie because you got a rubbish rod. It's like Noddy comes under the alarms tinging all the time. You don't catch fish. I catch a lot of fish. And my alarms only go when they're actually going. So a Noddy, a Noddy's a guy who doesn't catch fish and makes a lot of noise on the bank, hitting his bank sticks in. God knows what else they do. Um, I'm far from a bloody Noddy, I can tell you that. <laughs> anyway, um, Landon Tantrum. Just going to show you a little reason of why I fish here. Um, I'll stop talking now. This is the reason why. There we go. That was 30 seconds of pure bliss. This is what I mean. This is, oh, hello, Mr. Heron. And wild fishing at its best. Guys, look what I've got. I finally got a carp. It's a ghost carp. Boom. <laughs> I'm only playing. <laughs> Nothing. Sat here in the rain for like four hours, man. I've got to go. I've got to go back to the gym. I've got to go to work. I've got PT and then I've got the gym. Um, but it's really heavy rain now. Um, but yeah, I'll check the rods in a minute to make sure they will be presented right. Can't obviously keep casting here because it was, like I said, the wild fish. But uh, yeah, I sent out the, oh, let me quickly get that up a little bit. I sent out my drone, right? <laughs> and they're all right at the back, right? I sent them out the drone and I threw it out there and they're right out the back. So, you know, this is what I say about that kind of stuff. And, the, and uh, what was it? I was going about the other day about the quarter. DVD and the drones and God knows what else, and the deeper. It's like, he said, oh, I ain't got, if you haven't got enough time. So I got four hours. I ain't got three days here. I've got four hours. So that's what you call fishing. You, you know, it's hit and miss. That's the whole point of it. If you knew you're gonna catch every time, it'd be a bit, oh, you know? So yeah, it's like, and I seen a fish bop out right over there. You know, so no doubt they're probably on the other side of the lake. If I had a drone, I probably could found that out. Could have put a deeper out there. Could have went all the way round and, you know, fished it. But that wouldn't, to me, wouldn't be proper, would it? You know, it's cheating, man, cheating. Um, so yeah, I find that stuff, you know, a bit bizarre, really. You know, I have to suffer like a normal person would. You know, if I had a bleep then. Um, I have to suffer like a normal person would, you know? You just kind of guesstimate, you know? You work it out over time, you know? And people say you ain't got time. Well, I haven't got time to fish here for days on end and stuff like that. I mean, literally get a couple of hours here sometimes. Um, but yeah, if I was here longer, I probably would catch a fish, but I can't, I've got to go to work, you know? It's just the reality of things. And I don't fish on weekends, so I only fish in the weekday. Um, I've been lucky this week because I had a couple of people off and I just finished the boxing, so I've had a bit more time off. That's why I've been posting up loads of videos. But, um, Thanks very much, everybody, for all the support. Honestly, it's been crazy. The amount of my views and my videos have gone insane. Um, I do appreciate it. I really do, honestly. Um, 
can see. It uh, just keeps going up and up. And I think that the scam video is on like 50,000 views. Like, and I literally post that off a whim, as you see. I went in my garden and just went, <laughs> just ran in. A bit like this video. Um, but yeah, so this is the start of my uh, tench campaign. Um, I'm hopefully going to get one out of here. Um, they'd be very short videos though, because obviously I don't want to do long videos and just chat all the time. Um, but yeah, this was, you know, the first time I ever posted a proper blanket video. But it's the reality of proper tench fishing, you know. Um, it is proper fishing at its best. And, uh, you know, presentation's key at the end of the day. And, um, what do you think I was going to say? Uh, I was going to say, I can't remember what to say now. But anyway, um, going to reel all the rods in now. It's literally hammering down. I'm going to get home and uh, get ready for the gym. All right, ciao for now, guys. Thanks very much for the support. I do appreciate it. There's the float. There's some bubbling to the right, as you can see through the reeds. Can you see that through the reeds? I can't remember. There's a little bit of bubbling to the right. Just popping up. Um, but they're not going crazy. Um, and one thing, the last little tip I'll keep saying, oh, last little tip, so I keep remembering things. Uh, basically, imagine that float right there, that'd be pretty cool. Um, don't just keep putting bait in. Like here, it's not commercial, like I said, there's no other fish eating my bait. And when you're putting corn out, there's, you know, like I said, there's, there's rudd and stuff like that, but they wouldn't be going ballistic on the corn. You rarely do in here. So that would be all piled on the bottom. And I don't want like half a tin of corn out and just fishing with a tin of corn over it, if you have, uh, with two grains of corn over it, if that makes sense. So yeah, try and keep the baiting down to a minimal when you know, like this. They don't want to go crazy with it because there's no other fish eating it. It's not a commercial. That's what I forgot. Get punched in the air too many times, don't I, eh? Yeah. My boilies, my homemade boilies. I'll be putting some of them out. Won't be showing where, obviously, from my secret little spots. I've mapped it out from the told you from years of fishing this place. I know where the weed is and where it doesn't go. And so I can present my baits in there, basically. So, um, yeah, that's my homemade boilies for you. Uh, and uh, at the end of the video, obviously, I'm going to post up all the fish that I've caught out of it, just to show you what I've caught. Um, and you can see that I'm not talking rubbish. I know what I'm on about with wild. Wild tench. Uh, I've just got to reel the rods in now and go home. Right, ciao for now, guys.